Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, not much. Starting off the news this week, something that we missed last week. An extremely well-preserved woolly rhino in the far north of Russia has been found. It's so well preserved because it has spent the last 20 to 50,000 years in permafrost, preserving its skin, fur, and even lots of internal organs. In fact, there are even traces of what it ate before it died still around. Rather tragically, however, it seems to have died quite young, around three to four years old, and living away from its mother. A really interesting find for science, though. It's going to be really cool to see what researchers can find out about all these well-preserved animals coming out of the permafrost. Also, a very quick shout out to the Mary Anning statue design that's been released this week, with the Mary Anning Rocks campaign still raising funds needed to actually build the statue. Check out more about this great campaign in the description below. And now over to Ben, with some really exciting news about Spinosaurus. Thanks, Doug. Also in the news this week are a couple of publications from the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science, both on some pretty cool tyrannosaur discoveries. First, we have a great paper that describes a track array in northeastern New Mexico that possibly shows a tyrannosaurid, potentially T. rex itself, getting up from a prone position. The track comprises a left foot impression, as well as a pair of parallel prints likely representing the forearms, and nearby is an L-shaped impression that the paleontologists interpret as having been caused by carrion or a prey item. This array is therefore hypothesized to have formed when an adult T-Rex got up from lying prone on the ground, rising from a quadrupedal position and placing its left foot forwards to make the footprint, while simultaneously pushing down with its forearms and wrists to help itself stand, making the pair of parallel prints. It's a fascinating glimpse into a small moment in time in the everyday life of one of the Earth's greatest predators, and just goes to show how amazing trace fossils like this can be. The other publication is a description of new evidence for cannibalism in Tyrannosaurids, as three bones belonging to an adult, subadult, and juvenile Tyrannosaur from three different formations in New Mexico have been found to display bite marks and feeding traces made by other Tyrannosaurs. One of these bones, a dentary, shows signs of healing around the bite marks, indicating that the biting happened before the animal died, whereas the other two bones, a tail vertebra and a femur, don't show any healing, indicating that they were bitten into once the animals were already dead. The marks on all the bones show various different characteristics that indicate the techniques used when they bit down, and show that the tyrannosaurids in these formations would also feed on other tyrannosaurs in addition to their more common prey items, so it's a pretty fascinating study. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Quick announcement -y thing before we stop for this week. Pepper Quinn made this incredible artwork earlier this week, and we liked it so much, we chucked it onto a t-shirt. So head over to our merch store if that interests you. Links should be in the description, and maybe there'll be a little menu below, but the new designs might not be on there. I, I don't know. They should be available on our merch store. Anyway. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next Wednesday.